everyone, and welcome to this video on gravitational assist. It's section 6.3 in McGraw-Ryerson Physics 12 textbook. You probably remember seeing a video like this one from Physics Girl on YouTube. Notice in the video that what happens is the ball that's sitting on top of the basketball is launched much higher than it would ever get launched by itself if it was just bouncing on the ground. What happens is that the basketball gives most of its momentum to the tennis ball. And that's the basis of what we're going to do today with this gravitational assist. What you notice here is that there's, in the diagram that's shown, you have a planet that is orbiting around a star. And as that planet's orbiting around a star, we could put some type of satellite or spacecraft, and we could have it follow a couple different trajectories around that planet. We could have it follow this rather hyperbolic trajectory, or we could have it follow more of a curved and parabolic trajectory. And what we're going to look into today is more of that parabolic trajectory and how we can actually increase the speed of that uh, of that rocket ship as it goes around a planet. You may recall from Apollo 13, if you've seen the movie, that they weren't able to get to the moon, but what they did is they were able to use the moon's gravitational pull to slingshot their spacecraft back to Earth. And this is often used not only with uh, a situation where they have to get someone back to Earth, but this is used, for example, to get to Mars. We try to use the moon as a slingshot to allow us to get more speed to get to Mars. So the first thing we want to consider is maybe just simplifying this diagram a little bit. Here's our space, here's our spacecraft. It's going to be traveling in this direction. And it's got some velocity small v. Now it is approaching a planet, and that planet is much, much more massive than the spacecraft. And it is going to go around that planet and get slingshotted. Slingshot, slingshotted, uh, back out in this direction. And so that planet is going to be traveling much faster, or not necessarily much faster, but we're going to call it capital V for the, the speed of the planet. And in terms of how I'm going to drive this, I'm going to say that the positive direction is in that direction. And so we've got the small V is the velocity of the spacecraft, large V is the velocity of the planet. And I'm just going to refer to two points here, point A and point B. And what you'll notice is that the gravitational potential energy at A is equal to the gravitational potential energy at B. So I'm going to compare the energy that we have at A versus the energy we have at B. And so because those are equal, we're not going to worry about the gravitational potential energy here. They're both going to be equal distance from the center of the planet, so those gravitational potential energies are going to be equal. What we are going to be concerned about is the kinetic energy. And if you think about this, because there's no atmosphere that it's passing through, because there's no friction or anything like that, the only thing that's happening is you really have uh, kinetic energy converting into kinetic energy. And so because of that, we're going to call this and refer to this as an elastic collision. Because if you remember the definition of elastic collision, it is that not only is the momentum conserved, that's always the case with any collision, momentum conserved, but what's really important to consider in an elastic collision is that kinetic energy is conserved. And so that has to be what the case is here for the reasons I just pointed out. So we've got kinetic energy conserved, we've got momentum conserved, and so between those two things, we should be able to go ahead and solve this using conservation of energy. Well, we know that an elastic collision uh, has a very nice way of simplifying. We worked this out earlier in our course, where we were able to say that if I have something, if we, obviously this is not moving with, the planet is not at rest, but if I change the reference frame, so if I put it as the reference frame of the planet, having some trouble with my pen jumping and making lines here, if I have the reference frame of the planet, then we consider at this point that the speed is zero. If we're standing on the planet, we're gonna consider looking at the whole thing as if the speed is zero. Well, we derived some formulas for that earlier in our course. If we have a direct head-on collision, that's what we derive these for. A direct head-on collision was one where we found that V1 primed, so the speed of the uh, incoming spacecraft after collision is equal to M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2. 
times that initial velocity. And V2 prime, so the speed of the planet afterwards, is equal to 2 times M1 divided by M1 plus M2 times that initial velocity of the, of the spacecraft. It's worth noting as well on our diagram that mass 1 is the mass of the spacecraft and mass 2 is the mass of the planet. So in terms of this, we'll simplify this in a little bit, but mass 2 is going to be much, much greater than mass 1. Right? It's going to be so much greater, it's, it's essentially going to be a negligible mass, uh, is what m1 is going to be. So that'll, that'll simplify these equations for us. Keep in mind that v1 prime, as I just said, is the spacecraft after. And v2 primed is the planet after. And so for us to use these equations, we need to have the second one at rest. So that's why we set the reference plan, reference uh, frame of the planet to be uh, where we're doing this from. So we're going to assume that we're, we're not moving on the planet. And so we're going to write the spacecraft in terms of uh, a greater speed, because obviously from the planet's perspective, it looks like it's coming at it not only from the speed of the spacecraft, but also from the speed of the planet. I'm just going to move this down to do a little math with this here. So the first thing we know is that, as we, as we said, this is V2. So let's say V2 is 0 because the planet is the reference frame. That means that V1, if we're looking at it in terms of this, that means V1 is going to equal the small v, the speed of the spacecraft, plus the speed of the planet, capital V. So it's coming in. Uh, much quicker. And this would be analogous to you in a car. If you couldn't see out the window uh, around the surroundings to know if you were actually moving in the car, but all you could see was a, another car coming towards you, you might be going down the highway and conclude a car is coming towards you at 200 kilometers an hour. When in fact, you're moving at 100 kilometers an hour, but that car is moving 100 kilometers an hour towards you as well. So that's the first thing to consider now. So looking at our first equation, Let's look at this equation here. We'll call this equation A and we'll call this equation B. So first equation for a head-on collision. If we go ahead and we simplify this, we get V1 primed is equal to, uh, remember that mass 2 is much bigger than mass 1. So this becomes basically negative M2 on the top. And then on the bottom, we just get M2. Because M1 is negligible, so it's practically 0. And so that is... V1, we said, was V plus capital V. So this is negative V minus capital V. So it's negative, you expand it out, and that's what we get as our overall velocity. That's V1 primed. V2 primed, looking at B now, equation B, is equal to, remember that M1 is practically zero. So it's basically saying 2 times 0 divided by 0 plus m2, which of course is still going to be 0, um, times v1, where v1 was v plus capital V. And so this is just 0. All right. Well, that's what we get from those equations. Now let's put those back in terms of the planet actually moving and see what we get here. Put it back in terms of its original reference frame. Our original reference frame should be at rest outside of those planet and spaceship system. Let's just draw a picture first about what we know is happening. We know we have a planet. I'm so good at drawing nice round circles in this program. That is not at all round, but assume it is. And then we know we're now at this point, and here's our spacecraft. And so we know that planet, it's not at rest. It's actually moving at negative V, because we said positive direction is this way. And then the spacecraft, we're going to figure out how fast that is actually moving here. And so in terms of its original reference frame, v1 primed is equal to negative v minus v and because the planet is actually moving at minus capital v 
we're going to add to that. So this is original V1. We're going to add that change in the reference frame here. So that's going to be negative capital V. This is the velocity of the planet. And so what we get is negative V, negative small V, minus V, capital V, minus capital V, or negative V minus 2V. Now, what does that actually mean? It means that this spacecraft has a speed, what it had before, but it also has gained twice the speed of the planet. So it's considerably faster now, depending on how fast the planet was orbiting around its star. V2 primed, as we already noted, is zero, but then we add to that negative V, and that is just the same speed that it already had. So the speed of the planet hasn't changed, but the speed of the spacecraft has increased by twice the speed of the planet. I'll just write that as a conclusion, and then you can go ahead and try some of these questions out yourself. Hope that makes sense. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Here's my conclusion. Spacecraft will be moving um, its original speed plus twice the speed of the planet. And we're talking about the orbit of the planet. And this, the planet's speed will not change. There you go. That's how you use planets to get yourself quicker through space.